Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Guess who's back? Yeah, it's not Slim Shady. It's me, Harry Belk, back on the YouTube grind. And yeah, as you can see from the title, today we are going to be doing our NBA first round draft picks or predictions. But it's kind of what I would do in the draft if I was the GMs of all these teams instead of what they might actually do, which could be bad. So yeah. Let's get into it with the first pick. So the Atlanta Hawks have the first pick and there's a lot of ways to could go here. They could go Zachary Reese, I share, has been mocked number one recently a lot. Or got Alex Saar, who was mocked number one and is still mocked number one in my head. And that's why for the Hawks, who have, if Trey or Dejounte get traded, but I hope Trey don't get traded because the Hawks could use Alex Saar, who I'm choosing here. He's a big man that the Hawks need. I know they've got a Kong Wu, um, but Capella's probably out at the door as soon as. A Kong Wu, I don't know if he's the right guy. Yeah, Alex Saar, been playing in the ABL, put up solid numbers this year. He's a great defender as well. And he's averaged 1.5 blocks per game, which is really good actually for a big man. And yeah, he's very athletic, he's a decent passer, and he's a unicorn, just like KP. And Chris Sapps has been amazing when he hasn't been injured this season. So yeah, that's why I've got the Hawks selecting my man, Alex Saar. The Wizards, the Washington Wizards have the second overall pick. And when you look at the team, you might think, oh, you're going to go Zachary Reese here because, you know, he's just been mock number one for most of the recent mocks. And But no, no, they need a point guard. I know they need a big man as well, but that can come later on. I think we need to prioritise a point guard. And that is why I've gone for Rob Dillingham out of Kentucky. Yeah, they need a point guard desperately, as I've been saying. Rob Dillingham is a great player maker, great ball handler, which they definitely need on that team. He's hard working on both ends, the offence and the defence, and he can create shot, op shot opportunities for teammates and for himself. So yeah, that's why I got the Wizards selecting my man Rob Dillingham. Next up, the Houston Rockets have the third overall pick. And for Houston, you need someone who's going to make an impact straight away. You don't want someone who's going to be like, take time to develop, because the Rockets want to be making the playoffs this season or the next season particularly this season but they might make it next season they were close this year to be fair but then you know Tyrese and got a bit cocky in you know, Warriors throwing a clip right now actually Warriors come out to play Warriors come out to play yeah it's like that yeah so for the Rockets and the third pick, it could get traded in real life, which I wouldn't blame them for trading it for like a superstar. Maybe Miles, not Miles Bridges, ooh, no, Mikhail Bridges. And yeah, so I've got I'm selecting Reed Shepard, also out of Kentucky. He's an efficient shooter, plays like a senior, but he's a freshman, which is crazy. And always finds the open spot on the court for the shot. And he's a great catch and shoot kind of guy. So yeah. I think that would be perfect for the Houston Rockets. They need another shooter on that team, and yeah, Reed Shepard is that guy. Now, with the fourth overall pick, the San Antonio Spurs have it. And I know they need a point guard, but they've got two lottery picks, so, you know, there's one player who I've been saying has been mock number one who hasn't gone yet, and I think it's time for him to go. So I've got the Spurs selecting Zachary B. Sacher out of France. Yeah, he's a raw talent, but he has amazing upside. Probably one of the best upside in the draft. And But there is one thing that he needs, and that's a good facilitator for him to work properly. He's a great 3 and D guy. So, let's hope the Spurs are going to draft him. A point guard at number eight. Yeah. All right, Zach. See ya. Let's move on. The Pistons, the Detroit Pistons have the fifth pick. And I think they need someone who's versatile, who can play the three or the four because they're kind of missing that position, like a really good player. And they've got a star who can play the three or the four, so that's always good. But I think they need someone else there. And ideally they could have done with someone like Zachary Reese last year, but you know, the Spurs got him. And speaking about the Spurs and Zachary Reese, he's French, which could work with Wemby, which <laughs> let's just say ain't complaining. And Wemby can always find an open shot. They're always doubling Wemby. Anyways, moving on, because we're on Pistons here. Yeah, 
So I've got the piston to in Ron Holland out of the G League Ignite. Ron is an amazing defender, was an amazing defender last season. He's a great finisher around the rim, but there is one problem with him. He needs to work on his shooting, especially his three-point shot, because it's very inconsistent at the moment. So, yeah. But apart from that, he's got very good upside as well, and I think he could be one of the best players in this year's draft. The Charlotte Hornets have the six overall pick, and... I've been looking, it took me quite a while to do this, but with Lamella's track history of injuries, I feel like they could do with someone who's a combo guard, bit of a combo guard, and that's why I've got them such in Stefan Castle out of the Yukon Huskies, the NCAA champions, by the way, so he's always got a trophy to his name, or whatever you call it in America. It is a trophy, I don't know why I said it. Yeah, he's got an accolade even, and... There's some upside about Stefan Castle. He's the best perimeter defense in the league. He can play both on and off ball, so he can play the one or the two. And he also is a great feeling when Lamelo's injured. He might not be the most efficient to start off with when it comes to in the league, but it could be a good sixth man, seventh man. And if Lamelo gets injured, he could always step in. So yeah, I got the Hornets selecting Stefan Castle from UConn. Now the Portland Trailblazers. At seven, have a lot of things they could do here, but I feel like they need a big man. Yeah, don't think DeAndre Ayton's cutting it to be honest. It, what a waste of first overall pick that one from Phoenix, but I mean, they didn't know, so can't blame them, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, they need a big man, and that's why I've got them selecting another Yukon Husky, Donovan Klingon. He's got great size. He's great at the rim, he's a great rebounder, and he's fucking very efficient. So yeah, I got him sucked in Donovan Clean out of Yukon. Now, the San Antonio Spurs have a second lottery pick here, and this is where they get the point guard. But, there is, it might be an issue with this point guard, but it, it was, I was going to select him when this didn't happen, what's happened to him, his injury. And that is Nikola Topic from Serbia. Yes. He is by far the best passer in the class, or one of the best, shall I say. And the Spurs need a point guard desperately. He would be the perfect point guard. He could be NBA ready straight away. But the issue is, he might miss most of his rookie season. Because he got an injury, he tore, he like tore a bit of his ACL, which is never good. And yeah, he might miss his rookie season, or he might miss some of it. But I think it's worth the risk, because the season after, he'll be an absolute beast. A bit like Czech Holmgren was for the Thunder. So yeah, I've got him sucked in. The Serbian superstar, Nikola Topic. Now, Memphis at nine. The Grizzlies. They could have really done with Donovan Klingon, who went seventh in my draft. I think that's kind of who they're looking for. So, I'm going to have to go for a different big man. That's why I've got him going for the absolute massive seven foot four, I think. Kung Young Ware out of Indiana State. No, just Indiana, not Indiana State. My bad. So, obviously, Kung Young's got massive, good elite size. It's basically it's tall, it's the same size or taller than Wemby, which is insane. He's an amazing defender, can block shots, and he completes for Memphis Grizzlies starting five. Move Jaron Jackson back to the four, got Jar at the one, Bain at the two or three, or Smart at the two. It's an amazing defensive team and an amazing offensive team. It'd be a complete and the big top five teams in the West. Maybe even top three. It'd be up there with Nuggets, T Wolves and Thunder. I mean, it'd be elite for them. It's for Utah Jazz that up next at pick ten. And I think they're just gonna go for best available here. Yeah? Because there's not really anyone that they could use yet. It's like the team's a bit it's a bit jumbo mumbo. So I've got them selecting Matis Buzelis out of the G League night. And yes, he didn't have the most efficient or great season for the G League night, but it's shutting down and that says something. Clearly, he just won't run very well. He's shown efficient shooting in high school. He was like the most efficient shooter in high school. And he's an amazing, good free D and D, the free and D guy. And that could be very helpful for the Jazz. Good play him at the three and Lowry at the four. But yeah, it'd just be amazing. Wow, Matas Bozelas has great upside, could be the best player in this draft come end of his career. Now, the Chicago Bulls at 11. This team needs a big off-season. 
the market can't come back and Lovie needs to get traded. Vooch probably needs to go. Yeah, we have a lot of changing to do for this rebuild. And I've got him getting a Zach and Levine, Zach Levine play replacement because I think he's going to get traded, get rid of the money, send him off to somewhere like Orlando, Detroit, somewhere like that, maybe even Lakers. And yeah, I've got the ball sucked in. A guard out of Baylor of the name of Jacoby Walter. What's good about Jacoby, you might be asking, he's a dynamic three point shooter, can guard guards and wings because of his size, and is a great replacement for Zach Levine. And what can I say? He's got, got great upside, got his fours decently low, but it's not that low. And I think he come in the league straight away, mock up defenders, guards, wings, could hook him up. And make three point shots it's like a Zach Levine with better defense so yeah perfect replacement for OKC Thunder at 12 and there's only one player that these lot can select and that is Cody Williams out of Colorado he's got a high ceiling but a very low floor which is a risk but the Thunder have so many picks in the future so many picks now like and the team's great already so I mean it's worth the risk and there's also another factor. He gets to play with his brother, J-Dub, Jalen Williams, who absolutely turned into a superstar for the Thunder this season. And that's exactly what Cody could do. Thunder a great developing talent. I think this is the perfect fit for Cody at the OKC Thunder. Sacramento Kings at 13. And they need a lot. Not because like, they had a massive fall off this season. They were unbelievable. And I think they could do with it another shooter because the shooting ground that team, let's be honest. And that's why I've got them selecting a senior from Tennessee by the name of Dalton Connect. I think he's a senior anyway, might be wrong. But let's get into what's good about him. NBA ready, amazing shooter. Exactly what the Kings need and pretty simple. That's why I've got them selecting my man, Dalton Connect. Portland Trailblazers back up here at 14 and I've got them selecting a project player and that his name is Tijon Salon from France he's extremely, extremely, extremely raw talent he's a project player but he has all-star potential and I think for the boys that's already in a rebuild could you put him in the G League for a few years maybe give him a few minutes here and there and nowhere near the playoffs so I might as well take a project player with all staff potential because who doesn't want that 15 the Miami Heat now this was a hard decision for me between two guards one of them being Devin Carter one of them being Jared McCain they're both both extremely good but I've got them going with someone that the Heat always develop good players and they went for Hame Hackers last year and they're going for another senior this year Devin Carter from Providence, welcome to the Heat, in my eyes. That's what I think they should do. It's NBA Reddit and he's all around solid at everything. He's a solid defender, solid shooter, solid playmaker, solid rebounder. He can do everything and he is the embodiment of Heat culture. Let's not get this wrong. He embodies Heat culture. You can just tell by hearing what he says, see his play sound. He'll do anything for the team and that's what the Miami Heat is all about. At 16, it's for Philadelphia 76ers and they're losing Tobias Harris this season so they need a replacement and that's why I've got them selecting my man Tristan De Silva from Colorado as I said, he's a Tobias Harris replacement he's NBA ready and he's good on both ends of the ball good offensively, he's a decent shooter decent playmaker, good passer and he's very good defensively as well so basically perfect replacement for Tobias Harris Got the LA Lakers with the 17th overall pick and this guy, who I'm selecting for him, fits in perfectly. He was LA born, out of Duke, it's Jared McCain. And he was born in LA, it's basically perfect fit. Paint snails, I appreciate that, I think it was pretty sick. People hate on him for it, but like the guy with his life, I mean, it's fitting in LA perfectly. Because obviously, it's all about culture over there in LA. The combo guard on and off ball. He didn't get to show his on ball this season at Duke because he was mainly playing at the two, but he can play on ball, can be a good facilitator. The great shooter, we've seen in the match madness, he was a great shooter. Decent passer, as I said, 
and is a pest on the defence, he will not give up on the defensive end. It makes you really annoyed, they're always pressuring and they won't give up. And that is perfect for what the Los Angeles Lakers are looking for. But all on the Magic at 18, I've got them selecting the guard as well. And that guard is Isaiah, Isaiah Collier out of USC. And yes, he was injured for a decent amount of the season, but when he was playing, showed that he was the best athlete in the class, showed flashes of a superstar, but he needs to kind of work on his three-point shooting and definitely needs to work on his defence. But he's shown flashes that he can be a superstar in the future and one of the best players in this draft. At 19, we've got the Toronto Raptors. A hey, man. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm British, I'm not Canadian. Let's just say that. And they've got them selecting big man which they need, and that's Eve Missy from Baylor. As I was saying, the Raptors need a big man. Pertle just isn't going to cut it, let's be honest. And Eve Missy is a great rebounder and an amazing pick and roll player. So, you know, screen and then cut to a basket and boom, or catch him and boom, or catch him and lay up and boom. That is what the Raptors need. He would be an amazing fit at Toronto and I think that's why they're going to select him in my eyes. And that's what I would do if I were the Raptors GM. At 20, we've got the Cleveland Cavaliers. And they need a big man because I think Jarrett Allen could get traded. I know either Donovan Mitchell or Darius Garland's getting traded. So, the, uh, And even if they don't trade them, um, Jarrett Allen, they need a good backup because I'm sick and tired of seeing Tristan Thompson play the backup big. And I think they're going to go for an experienced big man by the name of Zach Eady out of Purdue. What's good about Zach Eady? Well, pretty self explanatory. He's an elite rim protector and an elite pro scorer. And Apart from that, it's a two times college player of the year. So, I mean, hello, is there any more to be said? And now, at 21, the New Orleans Pelicans probably will be pissed off at Zach Eady who's got selected because they really don't want him or really looked at him. But I think they also need a point guard. I know they've got Dyson Daniels, who's a great defender, but I don't think he's good enough to start. CJ McCollum is just getting old now. That's why I've gone for the senior Tyler Colick out of Marquette. What's good about time is that one of the best passers in the draft, along with Nikola Topic, just not as dynamic as a passer as Topic, but probably the second best passer in the draft, and also NBA ready, which the Pels won't say want to be in the playoffs, trying to win playoff series because this season got sweat. They got a sweep, 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 sweep. As Fight Rats said, actually. Sweep, 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 sweep. At 22, I've got the Phoenix Bonds, I mean, the Phoenix Suns got T. The Phoenix Bonds, sweep, 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 Keyshawn George out of Miami. Why have I got him sucked in then when they need a big man? Well, most of the good big men are gone. And yeah, they can play with Nurkic, it's fine. But I've got them selecting Keyshawn George, who's a good catch and shoot player. And he's always tried to get open. And when the sons have got Booker and KD, who might get doubled like all the time, Keyshawn George open, catch, shoot, goes in. That is exactly what they need. A bit like Grayson Allen in that sense, but not as much of a dickhead. <laughs> but yeah, that's a perfect fit for the Phoenix Suns. At 23, we've got the Milwaukee Bucks. One of the most disappointing teams last season. I mean, their staff is trash this year. They've hired back Darvin Ham, and they've got Doc Rivers, the head coach. So I know they won a championship with Darvin Ham, but... That's one of the worst coaching staff that I've ever seen in a while life. But if they think it's going to work, it's going to work. And I've got them selecting someone who can play alongside Giannis, either at the four or the five. And that's Kyle Flip Filipowski from Duke. The smart, high IQ player. So he's always looking around, able to organise play. He's a good playmaker, so he can pass very well. And there's the potential to be a three level scorer. We've seen his shot. He has a decent shot, he can shoot from three, mid-range and at the rim. So, yeah, that would be perfect versatility for the Bucks. And that's why I've got him sighted in, my man Kyle Filipowski. At the 
24th pick, we've got the New York Knickerbockers, who I've got them selecting my man Johnny Furphy out of Kansas. Great shooter, good size, bit of a raw talent, but in the Knicks, they can definitely work on that. They are good at developing talent. Well, Tibbs in, actually. Let's just think it'll be topping. But Deuce McBride's been developed well, and yeah, I think Johnny Furphy would be a great scorer for him in the league. Back to back for the Knicks at 25 here. I'm going to select a backup point guard who's basically a backup Jalen Brunson. Basically, calling him out of Pittsburgh, Carlton Carrington. Very high up that. I know some Knicks fans really like him, and I think he's like Brunson 2.0. It'd be a great. It's like six or seven from month from. I know Deuce McBride can play point guard, but I think he's a better off ball player. And Carlton Carrington is a very good on ball player. 26, we have the Washington Wizards once again. I think they need a big man, but I'm going to select a project big man of by the name of Bobby Clintman from Sweden. High upside everywhere. He's, he could be a very good defender, very good shooter, good, very good facilitator, a very good rebounder, very good at everything. But we just hope we need to hope that he can do it straight away. He's a bit like um, Kuma Bailey, who we just selected last year. He's got that kind of like buzz around him, so yeah, they could be really work him. Kuma Bailey turned out to be very good this season, so let's hope Clintman's the same from at pick 27. You've got my Minnesota Kimballs conference finals. I know it didn't go out very well against Dallas, and Dallas is about to get swept, but you know. Uh, we just want a good matchup. I don't know how we kept beating it like regular oh, season, but nice in playoffs it's turned up. I mean, we had a few game sevens as well. So yeah, it was quite hectic. But 27, T Wolves, I've got them selected in a backup point guard control. out of spin, Juan Nunes. What's good about him? He plays at his own pace. Who's another point guard who plays at his own pace? And Luka Doncic. I mean, people. When I was reading like, all the scouting reports, you know, everyone saying it won't, won't translate, but everyone were hating on Luka. But I think this guy, he plays like Mike Conley, just controls his pace, takes his time, great passer. And when Mike Conley's retired, or he's passed it, or needs some breaks, he's getting a bit old and tired, and one of can fit right in perfectly. At 28, we've got the Denver Nuggets, and I think they're going to go for an experience. Play so we like developing talent, the coach said. So I've got them selecting Kevin McCullough Jr. out of Kansas. First of all, NBA ready already, shoots efficiently, strong player, and is very physical, is a physical threat. So, you know, give that grit and grind, and that's going to be perfect. Because I think they should trade MPJ because they don't think he's good enough and replace him with Kevin McCullough Jr. and Christian Brown. I mean, that is like perfect. Perfect. The Jazz are back at pick 29, and I've got them selecting shooting guard Justin Edwards out of Kentucky. Yep, he's a good defender, he's athletic, he's a great finisher, but he's got inconsistent handles and his jumper does need work. Not the best, he was high up this season to start off with, but then he just kept falling and falling and falling. But I've got a feeling about like he'd sneak back into the NBA and just have an amazing like rookie year, which might be a push, but I think if he gets a point time, I think he could actually be really good and like a steal in this draft. And yeah, if Utah do it, then that'd be amazing. And finally, pick 30, the Boston Celtics. I've got selecting someone who on the draft board has always ranked really low for some reason, and that's Deron Holmes Jr. Uh, not Deron Holmes Jr., Deron Holmes for second out of Dayton. I don't know why he's always ranked so low. Yeah, that's kind of why I didn't pick him because I kind of forgot that he were there on the draft boards, but if he went to the Celtics, this would be amazing. He's an elite athlete, he's a great lob for it. Imagine like Brown, Tatum and Drew Holiday from throwing lobs to him. Oh my God, it'd be amazing. He's a solid shooter as well and a passer, solid rim protector and he's a switchable defender. I mean, that sounds perfect. He's basically KP, but like, not better. It is basically KP and that means they won't have to play Al Horford at five if Al Horford's still in the seat. In the um, league next year, he might retire after this year, but I feel like he'll continue for the win because they probably think they'll win back to back. And yeah, that's the final pick of the first round, and that's my draft order. So hopefully, you guys enjoyed my return, and if you did, give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you in the next video very soon.